Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, nice to be with you again this morning. It's good to see everybody uh, that's here. This morning, I want to talk about misunderstandings. I want to uh, uh, think about those occasions when we're not on the same page with somebody else. And uh, sometimes that's, uh, that's okay. You know, it can be really very funny, like the Laurel and Hardy routine where uh, they're hammering a nail into a piece of wood. One says to the other, um, when I nod my head, you hit it really hard. But sometimes it can be embarrassing too. And uh, I love the story of the lady who was at the airport and waiting to catch a plane. And she went to the snack bar and she bought a cup of tea and a newspaper and a small packet of biscuits. And she went and sat down to read the paper and to uh, have her cup of tea in peace. And as she sat down and she was reading a newspaper, she heard this rustling sound the other side of the table. So she looked up, she couldn't believe her eyes. There was a man, quite a smartly dressed man, the other side of the table, who was munching one of her biscuits. He opened the packet and he'd taken one of the biscuits out and was eating it. Well, half angry and half embarrassed, she reached over and she took hold of the packet and she pulled it back to herself took the second biscuit out and started to eat it herself. Well, then a minute or so passed and she couldn't believe that she heard the rustling again. So she looked over the top again. There was the man eating one of the biscuits. But this time he smiled at her. Now there was only one left. She was speechless. She didn't want to make a scene. She, she didn't want to uh, uh, do anything that would attract a lot of attention and make a, a big fuss of it all. But nevertheless, she was really angry. But then, as if to add insult to injury, the one biscuit that was left, the man took out, broke in half, and with a smile, <laughs> he gave her uh, the other half. She took it, well, I think snatched it really, uh, viciously crunched it in her mouth and fixed him with a steely glare of dislike and disdain. Well, the man was frowning at this and then he got up, drunk the rest of his tea and, and just left. Well, the lady, she just waited till her flight was called and she went along to the departure lounge. And then when her time came to show her ticket at the desk, uh, she opened her handbag to get the ticket out. And lo and behold, there in her handbag, <laughs> an open packet of biscuits. To her chagrin and shock, she realized that it was his biscuits she had been eating, not her own. Well, the embarrassment and the shame brought tears to her eyes. She'd rejected that man. She'd made it plain she hated him. And yet, in kindness, despite all the expressions of uh, dislike and, uh, and, and greed that she had shown, despite all of that, he'd actually given her the last half of the packet of biscuits. All she wanted to do was really to go find this man and apologize and make things right. But she couldn't. The queue moved on, she couldn't go back. It was too late. Have you ever noticed, as you've been reading the Bible, how often Jesus faced a, a similar sort of situation? They were usually on times, on, on the occasions when Jesus had said something really important and really profound the people that he was talking to just misunderstood what he was trying to say. I'm thinking of people like Nicodemus who, who came to Jesus at night. And, uh, and Jesus said to him, if you want to see the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. Poor old Nicodemus. Uh, he couldn't understand this. 
he thought Jesus meant that he would have to get back inside his mother's womb. Or do you remember the, the woman filling her water jars at the well? And she met with Jesus. And Jesus said to her, whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst again. And the woman takes him literally. And she says, please give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come here to this well, lugging water jars to fill them up. And the reason for these misunderstandings is that Jesus's message to them then and to us today as well is so radical, so revolutionary, so outside the scope of our own experience that we really struggle to take it in. So this morning I just want us to spend a couple of moments to make sure that here and now we are on the same page as Jesus. His message is far too important for us to misunderstand. This is what the message is, that God offers us here and now, this very moment, full and free and complete forgiveness of all our sins, past, present and future. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, the penalty for those sins was paid for by Jesus. So there's nothing left for us to pay. He offers us the same perfect righteousness that his own beloved son Jesus has. He offers us a peace and a joy fixed so deep in our hearts that no trial on earth, nothing on earth, under the earth, or in heaven even, nothing can take it away. He offers us eternal life, perfect bliss in him with heaven forevermore. And all the promises in the Bible, they're true, each and every one. He promises to be near us, to never leave us, to never forget us, to always always, always treat us with the same wonderful, tender, father-like love and care that no matter what our situation is, what we've done, where we are in our lives, it will always be the same. We can always go to him and receive the same love every time. If you haven't watched the sermon series called Great Truths of the Bible on the Ebenezer uh, YouTube channel, you really must go and watch them. You'll hear all of these astounding things that's the message of God to each and every one of us. And you'll hardly be able to take them in. In fact, they're so astounding, we, have to, we must keep reminding ourselves of them. That's the gospel. To receive it, we have to do nothing but have faith in Jesus. Trust his words. But the important thing is, they're so astounding, we're likely to leave it too late. So I urge you this morning, like the lady, don't be on the wrong page. Don't leave it too late. That lady, she got on the plane and she was sick in her tummy at her stupidity. As she sat down with that terrible knot of regret inside her, uh, the stewardess came and asked uh, her to move so that somebody could get into the seat next to her. And as she got up and moved and, and looked up, she saw actually that she did have a second chance because the man who wanted to come and sit next to her was the man whose biscuits she'd effectively stolen. Imagine the relief and the thankfulness of having that second chance, the chance to be on the same page again. And she was able to talk to the man 
to confess her stupidity and ask for forgiveness. And that's the gospel, isn't it? We have that chance this morning to get on the same page as Jesus. No matter how astounding and unbelievable it sounds, it's all true. And then we can confess our selfish sin, receive forgiveness, and receive eternal life, and the wonderful security of all the promises that are in the Bible. So this morning, don't misunderstand the Bible. Don't misunderstand what Jesus says. He's offering us salvation through faith in Jesus alone. Amen.